hi guys and welcome back to the channel in my last video i have shown you how can you make a simple generator from an old washing machine motor but this time i want to make a different one this time a axial flux generator the working principle will be the same as a wind turbine and maybe this time it will produce more than the washing machine motor i have shown you in the previous video let's begin firstly was to get my hands on a few magnets and how i was lucky enough to come across many microwave ovens I was being able to salvage some. Like example here I got 8, but still I have more. These magnets they are not the strongest but not the weakest as they pack a punch when combined. This was salvaged from microwave magnetrons. Now depend which magnetron you may have, like example here I have two, one got a pink ceramic isolator and one a white ceramic isolator. This isolator is quite dangerous if shattered as it's made of beryllium oxide. So it's quite dangerous if it's inhaled or chewy. So this video goes further without saying it will be your responsibility to take proper precaution before proceeding harvesting magnets from Magnetron. You have been warned. Moving along, the first step was to go and want to the design and design a little frame. This frame is quite important and this is the base structure of our generator. And after slicing and cura, it was time for the printer to print it. For this part, we need two pieces. And for connecting them two together, I will be using this 40 cm long rod I was having lying around. They have a diameter of 7.5 mm and they will be perfect for this project. With the frame ready, I've jumped back onto the design and designed a simple router support for our magnets. For this type of generator, I decided to go with 6 magnets and after slicing it as well in Cura, it was time for the printer to print it. With the rotor done, it's time to populate it with magnets. And how we're gonna do that? Well, I shall explain it a bit better this time. But before that, I have to tell you that this rotor got two ways of being configured. Because the simple one got a hole for a 608 bearing, which can be inserted into the model. But what I have decided instead of using the bearing for doing the motion, a better implementation, which can be done it before printing, or like in my case, because I have printed already, Instead of reprinting this part, I just have designed it a simple inner bushing. This bushing will just go on this hole. The middle rod will just be passing through it, giving a better stability while in motion. But now let's go back to the magnets. For the magnets, like I told you, they go two faces. One is south and one is north. And how are we going to check which one is which? Well, it's quite simple, basically. What I got here, it's a small compass. But you don't need to use this, to be fair, when mounting magnets. This is just a demonstration. Like showing on the compass, if I approach the magnet, this side is south on the magnets, the rougher surface. And if I flip it on the smoother surface with the rounded corners, it's north, you see? But not all of them are working the same. Because some of them, they got the north on this side, or maybe the south on this side. Depends from where you get them. If you get from the same type of microwave oven, they may end up being the same. But if you got like different microwave ovens, they may end up being not the same. That's why this part is a bit important. And now how to make it a bit better when inserting the magnets, I come across a simple way of doing it. Basically, I will just get a magnet, insert it partially with my hands. It doesn't have to be proper inserted as they have to be give it a slight uh, encouragement to go in the hole and we get the second one and place as well the second one like so and we get the third magnet and we'll check on this side the first one is repelling so the two faces let's say north going against one another if I move to the second one to the track so the way we have to place it it's one should be repelling and one should be attracting now I'll get the third one and insert it to the 3d model like so i'm getting the fourth one after and checking once again this is repelling this is attracting and this one is attracting as well meaning that i have to flip it like so and now if i check it once again repelling attracting and repelling once more so we have to do the same for the rest of them now I'll put the fourth one, then know this one should attract, this one should repel, and this one should attract. So we got already, one is repelling, one is attracting, one is repelling, one is attracting, 
and so on and so on till we finish mounting all of them and the last one because here sometimes it's a bit critical because you may have just only six but like i was lucky enough i got more the number seven magnets and take them once again repelling attracting repelling attracting repelling attracting and now with them being inserted i'll get my rubble mallet and giving them a slight encouragement to go in the hole as you can see they are properly mounted still we have to mount them a bit better because if they are not proper inserted fully into the remodel they will lead up to unwanted vibration while in motion and now fully inserted i will be getting my hands on some super glue i know it's a tight fit but still some safety precaution have to be taken in consideration and glue them just a bit we don't have to overdo it but a slightly touch of super glue will do the trick and after it's glue it we just leave it to settle and after they settle it's time to mount it by taking a 50 centimeter long road this time with a 8 millimeter in diameter this type it's a threaded rod and screw it in the 3d model by doing it in this way it will be more stable and also it will, it will not have too much vibration and by using another 8 millimeter nut i will be locking in its place so it doesn't come loose and as you can see it's really moving and if we add the top side the magnets are spinning freely like you seen here and as well they look proper balance so it doesn't wobble with the magnets steady it's time to move to the fan side and what i'm saying by fan side well it's time to speak about the coils For example here i have a microwave oven transformer and as well some salvage coil and i have decided for this project to be using the primary coil of the microwave oven transformer as it has a thicker wire and it will be easy to wind without being afraid of the wire snapping in the process as what i got here this is another microwave oven transformer on which i have removed the primary coil from it and leave just the high voltage coil the secondary and if i take something to put between a magnet and itself the iron core and as well connecting it, it like so and if i start a simple motion we see that we are generating some voltage but by doing so we're getting a high cocking effect and it's required a high force to move the magnet around and keep in mind this are not so strong as neodymium magnets as they are made of ferrite but still the higher the motion the more voltage we will be producing at the output like seeing here but as this axial generator i'm trying to build so it will not be having a cogging effect but also i want to show you that a coil without a magnetic core let's take as well a high voltage one doesn't produce too much as if it has an iron core you see it's barely producing two volts but by using a metal core it will be increasing the cogging effect and then it will be increasing the inductance of the coil and in result it will generate more but if we use the iron core like i said it will generate more as seen on the dvm but this was just a short experiment and as well a simple explanation why i want to not rely on an iron core due to the cogging effect in simple words the dragging effect as it requires too much force meaning when the generator will start to spin it will require a high torque not a high rpm a high torque to be able to generate something basically and also i have to mention that the cogging effect it's usually when the coil being shorted there would be the maximum resistance of the bobbin like example i am barely moving it gentle but it's very hard to move if i disconnecting it the cogging effect is less significantly so i hope you find this experiment quite interesting but now moving along of designing the coils and now i have went it back on top of the design and designed the bobbin support and after was slice and cura it was time for the printer to print it so here we have the stator fully printed. I have designed this piece to be somewhat versatile in a way that it will offer you multiple variants when it comes to design the coil. But as I was playing with some of my prototypes, like example here I got a serpentine coil. I saw that it is quite reliable but I don't like the way it looks basically. Still it's generating an output above 2 volts. And also here I have another type of coil which i 
I think I will be going with this route by using helical coils so small coils this particular one they are 200 turns each that's why they look a bit ugly and they are a bit double in size than the magnets because I have to remember the magnets are 12.5 millimeters so 1.25 centimeter in height and 52 millimeters so 5.2 centimeters wider with an inner diameter of 19 millimeters so 1.9 centimeters and what I did next, I went back on the design and designed a little G. And after slicing in Cura was for the printer to print it. And here we have it. These are the two 60mm 6cm washers printed. And uh, they have two cuts all around them. This will be for the wire to go around. And by using a bolt and few washers, from what I remember are 7 washers of 8 millimeters I got a small jig for making the bobbin then I got some more wire and winding it around a old spool of 3d filament I was having and after making somewhat a contraption of a jig for holding the spool of wire and as well by using two microwave oven transformers to weigh it down I placed it on the floor and then I have used my drill onto it and now let's make some proper coils I want to show you that I have did one and here it is is looking quite interesting and it is the same height as the magnets and it is simple to wind as the example this bobbin here got 180 turns on it and because it's more flatter and as well is covering the entire magnet it's much better for this generator so now let's make more coils After I was done doing some coils, I need to salvage more wire. The wire, like I said, will be taken out from some microwave oven transformers, which I have salvaged long time ago. The process is quite simple. We just have to cut away the welds from the side. And after, by using a mallet, we just knock the bottom side out. Then we get a flat screwdriver and just remove the, the two inner shunts. After so, we just inserted a long screwdriver. And by using a small piece of wood, we just knock it slowly the primary coil is coming out and here we have it and after a bit of cleaning up we can start wiring more coils so now after we did some coils it's time to mount them onto the stator but as this video is going for too long, I have decided to split it in few parts. And I hope I will see you all in the next one. Till then, have a nice day and thank you very much for watching. Yeah.